pursuit and practice of excellence in being a human being. Human beings who have dual excellence. It's not enough to be excellent in your science. You gotta be an excellent human being. How do you practice being a human being? You know how to practice your, your science. You know how to practice football. But you gotta be practicing being, it does not come natural to be a human being. We are rational animals. The normal thing for me, being from the Bronx, out two miles from the Bronx, and being an Italian father with a dirty mouth, is to react. Yeah, yeah. And in order to go above and beyond that state, we have to transcend our emotions, not hate them, they're beautiful. But we have to, for a better reason, go above and beyond them. And you know what that's called when you do that? It's called love. No. My mother was the best, my mentor. And my father had never been loved by anybody. He was a ghetto kid from the from an Italian section. And, and he didn't know how to love any, until he met my mother. And so what, what, what shaped me was love. Now, Father Jake's been around, and first of all, he, he was, uh, you know, he was with Duffy Doherty back in the 60s. And he's a Michigan State grad, and uh, seven years ago, he, he did the funeral for my father. Uh, he's just been a place in time, a person to talk to, a person to talk about your beliefs or your faith with, not just myself, but our other players. And he's just been so accessible. He comes to practice, hangs out, but doesn't press on people, doesn't, you know, he's a normal guy. Uh, he's been a football fan. Um, and he's been very easy to talk to and very supportive uh, for the people who, who are in need in that area. I came here in 1948 from New York because of the curriculum at Michigan State. I wanted to be a, a radio broadcaster. So I came here because they had one of the best programs for radio broadcasting. And I, was, uh, I worked at WKAR. I did that because I wanted to proclaim holism, which for me, as a Christian, means to become like Christ. And I wanted to do that, and I wanted to do it through radio, and that was my goal. Even as a student then, I was involved with this, uh, Biggie Munn and Duffy. We'd have pep rallies. Uh, across the street from the auditorium. There was a big uh, grounds there where people would gather on the slant. And I was the uh, head of the pep rallies. I was the MC, and I introduced the coaches. And so I was involved from that very beginning. My favorite, favorite, favorite game, probably, uh, one of them was uh, to beat Michigan at Ann Arbor. Um, in 1950, and to beat Notre Dame that same 36-33, that same. Leroy Crane hands off to Grandelius, who swings to his right, cuts up field, and goes into the end zone for a Michigan State touchdown, giving the Spartans a 14-6 lead over Notre Dame. I love uh, the mother of Jesus, but I don't like Notre Dame, and I don't like Michigan, so sorry about that. <laughs> This is probably when I'm like, you know, yay high, probably like three, four years old, barely walking around, running around. And we were playing soccer outside on the fields in Lexington, Kentucky. And I was like, hey, I'll be a goalie, you know? So I'm standing in goal and my dad's taking a shot and he's not gonna take a hard shot, right? But he just manages somehow, kind of whiffs it or whatever, and it nails me right in the face and my nose. And I think that's just the greatest memory ever because it's like, looking back on it, it's just so funny and it just reminds me like soccer is something we share and I still, you know, make fun of him about it today. Like, hey, you know, you kind of broke my nose. <laughs> Alexis grew up with a soccer ball at a very young age. I think as a baby when she was crawling, she was crawling around with the soccer ball. And actually at age two, we, I think we actually had her out on the field just kicking the ball. I think 
it clicked to me that I could continue playing soccer through the collegiate level and through high school and stuff as I got older. Uh, when I started running around on co-ed teams and uh, running past the boys and everything, and you can hear my dad in the background saying, go Lexi. So I think that's kind of when it clicked that, oh, like I'm good at this and it's something that I really loved and I bonded with my sister and my family and my dad especially through it. Me and my dad definitely have a very um, special connection. He was probably the main factor in me playing when I was younger, gave me a ball, was always outside with me. And when his um, medical hit, it was kind of just like, boom, he's laying in the hospital like, you have no kidney function, zero percent. So what do you want to do? Two thousand and two. I was diagnosed that I had a kidney disease, a rare kidney disease called focal segmental glomaterosis. One in a million in 2004, my wife donated her kidney to me. She was a match. Luckily, my mom was able to donate a kidney to him and save his life. That was a special moment, I think, for me, that you know I kind of get that second chance with my dad. In 2014, um, my kidney died out, so I've been on dialysis for the last four to five years. Not too long ago, kind of the same thing happened. Uh, it was just kind of like out the blue, hey, uh, your kidneys aren't working. So it's kind of like at that point, it was one of the lowest of my low because I felt like he kind of got robbed of that second chance at life. Alexis had to deal with that since a very young age because I thought I wouldn't be here today. Um, she had to learn life lessons real fast. So she had to grow up fast and I had a lot to teach her in a short period of time because I did, like I said, I didn't know I would be here today. The first thing that went through my mind is how do I take care of my family and who would be there to teach her the things that she needs to learn. At eight years old and your dad's like your biggest fan and he goes from running outside all day with you to, you know, laid up in the bed, can't do anything, it's, it's hard. When I play I have a really fearless mentality and attitude and it all stems from um, my father. Everything like he's been through and he's faced it head on, um, he's been strong for me and my mom and you know he's always said everything's going to be all right and I think that's just transpired to everything that I do in life and so when I go out on the field uh, you know I never shy away from the challenge or tackle or anything like that because um, if he's able to lay everything out on the line for me I can lay everything out on the line for my teammates. You know, if something was to happen to me today, I would be happy because I know she has the skills and capability to survive and be a good citizen in this world. It means the world to me to have that man and know that he's still there in the crowds, even if I'm on the sideline or playing. Um, just, just having them there, it just reminds me that every day is a blessing and it's not that I, you know, I have to do something, I get to come here, I get to be a part of a team, I get to be a part of something bigger than myself. After I graduated, I was drafted in the Marines during Korea. So I already had a job after KAR in WTVB in Coldwater, but they grabbed all of us graduating. And I went back to New York and got drafted. So I spent two years active and six inactive in the Marines. And um, then when I came out, I, went, I had a job already in radio, but I decided then um, I was going to stay for the priesthood. Be wise the way you use your knowledge. Who to encourage and who to have to push or pull. And I ask you, with me, to understand the wisdom of God in Jesus 
And his way of using it is through love. Isn't that beautiful to have that, that empowerment? I really feel I like an important part, not important for me, but the idea of support. Spiritual support for all is really important. And support doesn't mean patronizing or matronizing. It means enhancing what they already have uh, by being candid and direct and honest. And some of the services I have, everybody, they, they, irrespective of what they believe, they come and we talk. And, so. The best way to describe it is love. I got my doctorate and I came to Michigan State I thought there, there's a distinct connection between religion and medicine. It would help in the, and aid in the healing. And then I found that a lot of people don't do religion, but everybody does spirituality. And so here's the definition of spirituality. It's not religion. It means they practice their values and they use as a basis for that their religion, some of them, and some of them use their humanities or whatever. Everybody has spirituality, but not everybody supports it religiously. He's more than just a uh, spiritual guy. He's a part of the football family just because of his interaction with our players in a very non-threatening, casual manner. And he really has no, uh, no agenda. There is no agenda. He just cares so much about all of us. You know, I know he makes such a great effort to get to know as many guys on the team as he can, um, no matter their religious background, no matter anything. Just he just genuinely cares about each person in this program, and and uh, he just you know wants to get to know about me, my family, my social life, how I'm feeling about football, what's going on in any aspect of my life. So he's just been somebody that's been a great friend to me, and and I uh, just really have enjoyed my time here with him. And the ways revealed. I'm not a parent, but I am a coach, kind of. A coach is a person who appeals people to their, the best of who they can be. And I feel good about that. And I feel capable of that. Now, I got degrees and all that doesn't make, what, what my strong suit is, I'm a human being. That's why they call me father or anything like that. I'm a human being. We're all equal different jobs, and I think if I can treat people humanly, then I'm getting to them. My wife and I decided that we would fight, and we did. Um, even with the peritoneal dialysis I take today, it allowed me to live my life with flexibility to take care of my family and still be able to provide. It's kind of nice because his only thing he said is he wanted to see me through college. And he's done that, you know, he's fought nail and tooth to do that. And so anything past this is a bonus. And uh, he's always, that's, that's my why when I'm on that field because that man has gone through the world and back for me and I can go through the world and back for my teammates, even through metal leg, injuries, anything, it's worth it, so. She has that mentality not to quit. She felt that she made a commitment to MSU and she made a commitment to Tom and Tammy that she needed to lead and lead by example. And I think those same skill sets will serve her very positively out in the workforce. Um, she doesn't believe in leading by, by title or position. She believes in leading by example. And that's the only thing that I always want her to do. Earn your right. Earn your way. My wife and I are very proud of her. One of the things is just to see her kind heart. She's a very loving, um, giving person, loves to give back, and I just hope that she continues down that path. And I believe she will. Um, but again, um, we, Juanita and I, my wife, were very blessed to have had her. you're gonna do it, do it 110% or don't do it at all. And one of the phrases that he's always told me is, you know, don't follow, first never follows, leaders never follow. 
And so that's kind of something throughout college I've always carried with me. And so that's, that's my why for everything that I do. And I think that it's just a mantra I think I'm gonna carry throughout my life. And when my dad's here or gone, it'll resonate with me. Just had a lot of great talks with him and spent a lot of, had a lot of laughs at our position meals or um, seeing him at church or seeing, just seeing him on the sidelines. And um, he's just always right on the edge of uh, that red line on the sidelines and just wanting to get as close as he can to us out there. And he's always cheering us on. I got hit and backed up to him by a cameraman and broke four ribs. So I'm down on the ground, I say, oh crap. And so D'Antonio comes and says, are you okay, Jake? I said, yeah, but I got one more rib to give for the team, that's it. So that's supposed to be fine. Just moments that stand out to me from over the years are just all the times on the sideline during games when, when he's just always saying, I got a great feeling about this game, I got a great feeling about this game, or He's just always got so much positive energy that he's brought to every game, every practice. That just spreads amongst everybody, and I think he's just been a good luck charm, honestly, over the years, and has just brought a lot of just, just blessings to our team. This is an excellent program, and my idea is to enhance the excellence to be excellent in function, you need support. You can't do it alone. I graduated in 1951. The 1951 Spartans were really raucous. And the sidelines were raucous. But so are they. So are the 2018 raucous. It depends on the individual and how they celebrate. That isn't a good answer, is it? It's the best I could do. crowd at Spartan Stadium still filing in for this early afternoon kick between the Spartans and their in-state rivals from 70 miles up the road in Mount Pleasant, the Chippewas from Central Michigan. And they come in with a solid defense. It's gonna work, guys, it's gonna work! For Michigan State, the story is they need to find a way to run the football between the tackles. Normally the bread and butter around here, Jason. If they get it done today, it'd be a big lift for the offensive line. MSU has won the toss. They have deferred. Central Michigan will receive. Here's the run up and the boot. Lazaro looking to throw again. Ball's tipped and intercepted at the 35 yard line. And look who makes good on that penalty. It's David Dowell. First interception for Dowell. Making a big play for that defense. Trying to swing momentum here in East Lansing. There is Jefferson back in the running back. He'll take the handoff from Lewerke. They're tugging at that football as he barrels inside the five. Down to the three. Jefferson to the right of Brian Lewerke. He will fake it to Jefferson. Brian Lewerke runs to his right. Untouched into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Hardest play to defend in goal line situations. Zaro looking to go to the air, and he's dropped for the first time. Back at the 25-yard line, that's Raekwon Williams. Four receivers here for Lazaro. Trying to create something, dumps it off, and it's read perfectly. Morrissey with a big-time tackle. Medium drop, winds up, throws right side, leaping grab, Cody White. Dragging defenders to the 10-yard line goes Cody White. The worky takes the shotgun snap, rolls to his left. He'll good. keep it. He's got some daylight. Dives into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. The Spartans may be starting to flex their muscle here. It's 14 to three. Just over two minutes to play in the half. Third down oh, throw is going to be picked off. Picked off by Justin Lane on the near left sideline. Runs to his right. And he's inside the 35 to the 34 yard line. 33 yard field goal try though. For the sophomore from Cincinnati. The snap back, the put down, the kick's on the way. And he splits the uprights. 
That'll end the half. Central Michigan kind of sputters to the finish, but they led early three to nothing. But the Spartans at the end of the half find themselves up by two scores. The Spartans get it first to start the second half, leading now 17 to three. There's Davis, spins off the man, jukes another, almost to the end zone. He's gonna be just short. Xavier Crawford made the play to stop him from taking it to the house. Here's Welch in motion, taking to him, give to Hayward. And he flips his way into the end zone, touchdown Spartans. Hands the ball off to Jonathan Ward. He's hitting the backfield. Ward loses three back to the 23. The working under center. Hands the ball to Weston Bridges. Starts yes. left. Cuts right. And double team tackle finally at the 16 yard line in motion Welsh. Hand off to Ladarius. Off left tackle. He's got to the goal line. And oh, he is oh. just short. Hand off to Ladarius. Good blocking. There it is. Powers his way off left guard for a score. Touchdown, MSU. Five wideouts, takes the snap back, throws over the middle. Knocked away beautifully by David Dowell. Spartans at the 33 yard line of CMU. Toss sweep to the left. Connor Hayward. Brown work. he rolls to his right, throws on the run. Oh, it's made by it. Connor Hayward, and he's got a first down. And the work, he will take a knee here as Michigan State will improve to three and one on the season and get their fourth straight win in this series over Central Michigan.